Extension uses a lot of surveys. And I was talking with one of my colleagues recently, Linda Brewer, who had an aha moment about her survey use. She was talking with a faculty member who was compiling a survey that he wanted to use to measure the effectiveness of his programs. And she found a lot of interesting points that needed to be discussed. So I've asked her to be our guest today. Linda's with the Department of Horticulture here at Oregon State University. And welcome, Linda. Thanks, Molly. Uh, I have to say that nothing really prepared me for the dog's breakfast that I found in that Word document when I opened it. This is someone I'm collaborating with on a larger project. And he had written a survey and just wanted me to take a look at it. The first thing I saw was, oh, none of these items is numbered. Then I looked more and realized none of the pages is numbered. This is a, it's probably a 50 item survey for delivery in person. So the- So an interview. It is an interview, that's exactly right. So here's this document with about 50 questions in it. No numbers on the pages. What if I drop my survey form while I'm talking yeah, to you. Yeah, or the, the flood comes. Absolutely. The second thing I noticed was that this individual's writing style lent to asking more than one question within a single item. So I wanted to impose a little order on this survey, so I color-coded things. According to their apparent use, is this a, a needs assessment item? Is this item attempting to determine change in knowledge, behavior? Uh, so you're trying to identify the objectives that were going with these questions. Exactly so. The color code I used most of all was, what would you do with this information if you had it? So, so he hadn't thought about use and, and what he was going to use the, the findings from these data for. So, so there was some befuddlement that was going on in the survey. One of the things that you need to worry about, Linda, when you're dealing, when you're constructing a survey, is that it needs to be clear to the reader, to a naive reader. Absolutely, which is wh who I was in this, in this instance. At one point, he kind of burst out, this is so great um, to talk to somebody about these items because I've only carried them around in my own head. And so, you know, that kind of brings another point that I think is kind of major, collaborate with somebody when you're writing these items. And, and not just collaborate, but pilot test your instrument after you've done it. Run it through three to five people who are similar to but different from the sample that you're targeting. And that's really important because it helps you, again, with naive readers, to find out where the problems are. Now, I had a big aha moment in this um, interaction when I asked why certain, a certain group of content was being handled by a Likert type question, which is um, strongly disagree, disagree somewhat, agree somewhat, strongly agree. Why, why are you using that kind of item with this content? The answer was because I want to be able to um, run some statistics on the data. Any item you're collecting is going to result in some kind of data. If it's, not, if it's not giving you something that can't be synthesized and summarized in some way, you don't want that item. So uh, we talked about that for a little bit, and my aha moment came when I explained a Likert item is going to be for opinion, feeling, exactly. emotion, exactly. not for, are you doing this? Are you doing that? So that was a big aha for me. Um, just in terms of other things that I came, for, for, um, came out of this interaction with, um, having a naive reader work, on, work with you on a survey helps you avoid these illogical things like first I'm collecting your name, address, all your contact information, and then maybe several items further down I'm assuring you of confidentiality. Probably I want to have the confidentiality exactly. right up at the top. Yeah, it, it, the point that you're bringing up is really important. Um, if you're going to have any intention whatsoever to disseminate these findings outside of 
the program that you're running. Mm. You need to make sure that you're protecting the subjects that you're, the participants that you're getting the information from. Mm. And you have to tell them that they're participating voluntarily, that these are confidential, mm. that they will have very little risk, and you will have no compensation for this. That all has mm -hmm. to be at the front end. I'm thinking that not only protects the folks in your sample, but it also protects you professionally, it, it protects the university. It sounds like you really did a, a, a cons consultation with this person, not just on survey development, but in terms of data entry and data management yeah. and utilization as well. Yeah, I think that's right. And that's, I think that's part of what the Western Evaluation Capacity Training is all about, isn't it? Having it is. Having more people on the ground in the land-grant institutions who can share with colleagues uh, basic practice for, for program evaluation. Yes. Thank you, Linda. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Oh, well, it was Your fun insight. to share this idea. Your insights were really wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much. This is a new experience for me. I'm sure it's not a new experience for you, but I'd like to hear comments from you about what you think about what I did. That's how I build the blog. The blog can only get better if you help me. Thank you so much.